back to Behind the Bikini. And what episode are we on now? Is this, is this 16? 16? Yeah. It's 16. We've been doing a full prep. A full, Isn't that that's a full prep? Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> like that. I know. We, we've had two preps go on within our pre- right? podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny how fast time goes, man. Like I sit there and think about it and I'm like, geez, I was just... You know, I had a photo shoot yesterday with um, Brian, who I've shot with since I moved here to Virginia. And I'm just like, man, I've been shooting with him for like 13 years. Where did the freaking time go? Yeah. Like, where especially, did it go? Yeah. Especially around the holidays. It's always like, wait, it just was New Year's like, yeah. you know, yeah. 12 months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, before we get too far into this, guys, if you haven't done so already, subscribe, like, comment, put your questions in the comment section and things like that, too, because we do go and look at that that stuff, too, so we can answer your questions. Um I've been getting a lot of really good feedback, a lot of really great interactions. So we love that kind of stuff. Keep it coming. Um, that's what we're here for. So we want to tailor these podcasts to what you guys want to know. So the only way to do that is for you to tell us. Tell us what you want to hear. Tell us what you want to learn. And we will do our very best to provide that for you. Um, but it's been a lot of fun so far. And we're going into, I can't believe we're going into a new year. Like it's just, it's crazy. So um few things we are going to start um putting this up on spotify in the new year so we'll start that um uh, so we've had a lot of people asking about that um main reason why we haven't done it yet is just because we want to kind of keep our audience in one spot but now i understand that people want to listen to it on different platforms and things like that so we will be expanding to spotify um coming january so there's that for you guys um what else am i missing anything in particular that we're doing we rebranded a little bit a we rebranded bit. a little mm-hmm. bit and CCTS yeah. is also around the yes. corner. Yes. So that's going to, that, I can't believe it's a month away. Literally. Literally. I'm like, month. again, the freaking time. I'm like, where is the time going? I don't I gotta like get this. Outfits. I know. All the girls are like, I got my outfits. I got 10 outfits. I'm like, I, I know. don't even have one outfit. <laughs> well, I have stuff coming. I, one of the outfits I ordered came in and I actually ordered two of them on accident. Like I put two of them in my cart. So I have an extra. (laughs) Don't give it to anyone or else that will be awkward. (laughs) I know. Right. Well, no, actually I I reached out to my one friend who I think could fit into it. I was like, do you want this? Cause if you don't want it, I'm going to turn, I'm going to return it because it's cute. I'm like, it's, it's really cute, but I don't need two of them. So (laughs) is she not going to CCTS though? No, she's going to CCTS. Oh, okay. But uh, but I may not wear that for CCTS. So if I don't, I mean, she's welcome to, we'll just coordinate, make sure that we don't wear it. Exactly. (laughs) Or we all need to buy this outfit. Right. And then we're all all look the same, right? Um, Except that everybody's going to have, so we are doing loungewear this year. That was the consensus as far as, you know, whenever we do this, for those of you that have not been to CCTS, we always give out, um, you know, warm ups or whatever, depending on what the, what we're doing that year. And, um, and I reached out to all the girls in our, in our little private Facebook group and asked what they wanted in loungewear one by, by a landslide. So we're doing loungewear this year. So everybody will match at one point, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so how we will match. We do not know. That's Sean, right. That's Sean right. keeps us in, in the dark until. Yeah. I got to have the whole surprise, experience, a surprise wow experience, all that stuff. We always do something a little bit different every year. Give you guys like, you know, the theme and all of that kind of stuff. Like our theme this year is, is dripping in diamonds or decked in diamonds, however you want to call it, but it's going to be all crystals um, and kind of focusing on the aspect of the, the the heart of the ocean, the blue diamond from, from, from Titanic. So that's what our whole theme is kind of centered around. So I tell people like, take that, with, do with that what you will. Um, like some people are going to be wearing like all crystallized stuff. Some people are all blue, like whatever, whatever you want to wear. That's cool though. Go for it. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be fun. So we're getting all the final finishing touches on there. We actually brought on a new, a new, well, not new. They were sponsoring last year too, but they signed up yesterday. So we've got another sponsor signed on now. So cool. um, we'll that, them up in the, in the group and stuff like that, probably today. I'm uh, kind of announcing that too. So, um, yeah, it's been good. It's been good times. Good times. I can't fun wait. Times. <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> for you, especially because you're doing all this moving and stuff like that. This will be a nice little retreat for you. You know, you get away for a few days, can relax at the Ritz. And I was going to say, I'm going to be chilling at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> I know, right? Go hit up the spa. It's so funny because there's a, it, one of the reasons why we go back there all the time is because their service is just impeccable. You know what I mean? Um, oh, they take and, such good care of you guys. Like it was hundred percent. Like that and was they my remember first us. Yeah, they remember yeah. us. They're like, oh, the cuties are coming. The cuties yes. are coming every yes. year. <laughs> when 
was downstairs in the lobby the first night. We got there a day early and they were like, are you a cutie? And I, it was my first year. I'm like, well, like, not yet, yeah. but it's my yeah, first you are. year. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. It cracks me up. And they're great. Like, <clears throat> the cool thing about them, too, is like, they're not like a typical hotel chain where like their staff stays with them for their whole career. So it's like every time I go back, it's the same staff that are same there people. every year. And um, like the the one lady that runs the spa, like she remembers me every time I go there. So like she brings me bottles of champagne. Like I was at doing the setting up check-ins and stuff last year and she brought me a big bottle of champagne and had one set to my room. And I was like, I, I can't remember, I wasn't in prep at that point, but I was in like a reverse. So I wasn't drinking that much and stuff like that. So I remember I was like, I went home with four bottles of champagne. <laughs> I was like, eh, whatever. I'll They'll go to use at some point. Yes, they did throughout the year. They got used. They absolutely love got it. used. Yeah. So, I love you know. it. How many years have you been there now? This will be year. So we started there in 2020. So we went there in 2020 for because okay. during the COVID year, they were the only um, hotel venue that we could find that would work with us with all the COVID restrictions and stuff like that. So... And they, and they came to us too and said, listen, thank you for having your event because everybody else canceled. Like all of the other events that had been planned. So they have all been canceled. So it worked out really well because they have a huge space on their fifth floor for, you know, their banquets, all that kind of stuff. And typically they divide it up um, so that you have a party in each one or whatever. And um, with the COVID restrictions, it was, you could only have 10 people in a certain period of like amount of space as far oh, as God. like the capacity was concerned. So they gave us the entire fifth floor. So they're like, that way you can have your full event because, you know, you can have 10 people over here, 10 people over there, 10 people over there, blah, blah, blah. And then you got enough space, you know? So yeah. we ended up having the entire floor to ourselves. Um, we didn't need the entire floor. Because <laughs> it's, it's big. <laughs> it's big. It's huge. It's big, that um, fifth floor. Yeah. So they did everything they possibly could to accommodate us as far as the, you know, sticking within the restrictions and all of those kinds of things too. Wow. So, That's really know, sweet of them. Yeah. So once we did that, we're like, well, we're definitely coming back here next year. You know, so we've been there for the last couple of years. So, um, and it's, again, it's the same event planners and stuff. So it makes it really easy. We just, they just know what to do for us at this point. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we just walk in and it's all taken care of. We're good. You know? So yeah. It's fantastic. And it's we literally attached to like a really luxurious mall as yeah. well. So like we went a couple nights, we, you know, walked the mall, got some steps in, we went to yep. dinner over there. So Literally, once you get there, you don't have to leave. It is yes. fantastic. Absolutely. And that the Tyson's Galleria, that is, um, I can't remember what they called it. It's like the number one mall, like as far as luxury malls is concerned, like in like the Nor North America or something like that. Just yeah. because they have, they literally have all of the luxury brands and everything there. Everything from Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all that stuff. So I literally um, walked out of the hotel and Louis, Louis Vuitton is right there on the left. Yeah. And I send him a message to Drew and I'm like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, it's and it's great because you can get away. And they have they have um, regular stuff there too. You know, they have Cheesecake Factory and all that kind of stuff right there too. So it's like you know, you know, we got everything in between. So yeah, that's where I really got my good. coffee every morning. I just like yeah. walked, and there was different coffee shops in yep. there. It was awesome. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, anyway, yes, looking forward to that. Time. Just four yeah. weeks away. <laughs> no, right? So with that, how's that? How's the moving and all of that stuff coming for you right now? <laughs> oh, you know, it's like every day is something different. I will mm -hmm. say the last couple of days have been better. Um, so just to give a little background story right now, we have um, rented a space in Scottsdale, Arizona as a second home. We're keeping our home in Florida. Everything stays the same that way. So pretty much half of everything in the house, we were packing to send to Arizona. Okay. Um, so the plan was Monday, the movers were supposed to come. And then we got a call Sunday night that they were not coming on Monday, that they were going to come on Tuesday. Mm. And then they told us that they would give us a time frame on Monday. So Monday comes and I don't hear anything from anybody. I had to reach out from them and they gave me a quote from 3 to 6 p.m. But within that time frame, the movers would arrive. So Tuesday comes and I have my whole day planned. And my goal was to get on the road Wednesday morning at 3 a.m. with my two mm. dogs by myself and break the trip up into two days. I was gonna try to yeah. get there by Thursday night. Well, the movers did not arrive at my home till Tuesday night at 7.30 PM. It was dark and they got there and it was a complete nightmare. They um, tacked on about 2K more of fees. 
and oh, no. drew and i are just literally standing there like are we letting these people take our stuff or not and we just kept going back and forth back and forth finally we pulled the trigger i just hope my stuff gets there they ended up pulling out of my house at 10 o'clock at night just oh my God. ridiculous um then in addition to that they can't tell me right now when my stuff's gonna be there so i can't get on the road and go i don't have a bed so like oh my, my bed is on that truck so the frustrating part is they're like, hey, Jordan, like, you know, listen, we can't tell you. It could be after Christmas. It could be three days from now. Like, we don't know when it's going to get there. You're, we have to get on the road. And then you can call in 48 hours and request an update. And then we can give you more of a better timeline. So at this point, I literally have no clue what day I'm leaving. Um, the good thing is, is that I was going to go by myself. So now with this timeline, with them telling me now it's not going to get there till after Christmas, what it looks like is I'm going to be able to stay the rest of this week and next week, my gym is going to be ready to move by late next week. Construction is finishing up. Um, we were waiting on electricians and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it should be ready to like start moving things by next Wednesday, Thursday. So the goal is to move the gym within a two to three day period because I can't shut it down for very long. It's got to get yeah, done because yeah, yeah. yeah. people pay memberships. Well, especially um, this time of year, you know? Exactly. Exactly. But the good thing is, is that around Christmas time, it's less people, people yeah. are traveling and things like that. So what it yep. looks like is we're going to be mo moving the gym a couple days before Christmas, and then we will be driving on Christmas to oh Arizona, which is an ideal, but it's ideal in the way that I'm not going to be driving alone. And yeah. then I'll, I'll at least be with Drew and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm only disappointed because I wanted to spend Christmas in Arizona. Yeah. I, want, I, I, my, my idea was to get up there ahead of time and get the house set and decorate it. And then Drew was going to come to home, you know, right. but yeah, so it's just, my plans are changing that, you know, yeah. what I thought was happening is altered and that's okay. Um, I just kept telling myself I'm completely powerless right now. You know, yeah. there's nothing to get stressed about. Um, but obviously there's lots of stress, lots of finances. I haven't been sleeping, you know, yeah. all the things. So, well, you know, I, I was in Japan for Thanksgiving. You're going to be somewhere in the middle of the U.S. for Christmas, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, when are you getting a vacation? And I'm like, yeah, when, when you guys what? expect me to get a vacation? By the time I get there, get settled, it's going to be January 1st. All my clients yeah. are starting to prep. Like, there's no vacation. Well, people don't understand, too. Like, when you run your own business, there's no such thing as a vacation. There's just no. not. No. I mean, you know, you can take a couple of days off, but you're still working. Like, I know myself, I don't I don't ever take days fully off, ever. No. no. Ever. Have you seen the meme floating around? Drew just posted yesterday. It was like, if you see me, I am a business owner. If you see me. Yes, I saw myself, that in his stories yesterday. Yeah, leave I me saw alone. That I'm stories. having a Absolutely. staff meeting. Mm -hmm. And oh, Drew that's... literally all the time when I'm looking at him, he's like, <laughs> and like talking to himself and like remembering. <laughs> literally, that is my husband right now to a T. So. <laughs> oh, I, I know that feeling. So does Dan. Dan knows that feeling too. Yes. I mean, it's just like. Sometimes, and I'm, you know, I tell people, like, I'm an oral, uh, oral one or two, so I, I learn through listening. Yeah. So sometimes just talking it out and saying it aloud helps me to absorb it better. Right? Yes. yes. So I did, like, I did a photo shoot yesterday and I did this stupid little reel where I, I think you liked it, where I was a reindeer and drinking a beer and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And I thought of that on the drive up. So while I'm standing there in the studio, I'm, I'm reciting the script out loud to myself in the studio. Like I told my dog for Brian, I was like, just hang on, let me say it a couple more times. And then go. <laughs> let me like, try to remember it. <laughs> yes. I was like, I need, just need to talk it through a few more times yeah. and then we'll be good to go, you know? So I'm like, I, I get it. Sometimes you gotta talk, say, just say it aloud, you know? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. So, so how's your, uh, how's your week going? How's your, I know you're just as busy getting ready for CCTS yeah. how's your reverse and all the things. Um, everything's going good. Um, I, so I just turned in my check-in stuff today, like this morning, Thursday, Thursdays are my check-in days. So, um, I'm waiting to hear from Jamie on, on that, but I did drop weight again this week. So not a lot, just like a percentage, but still it's down. Um, mm -hmm. my food's up my activity, like my cardio is down. So all of those things are good. Um, I didn't particularly do a free meal this week. Like I have, you know, put into my plan. I sat and like, I'm <laughs> at this bag of these pumpkin pie covered chocolate covered almonds. And I ate almost a whole bag. <laughs> so I was, I, I was sitting there watching, just watching a movie, you know, you know how I do. And that's yep. just what I was doing. So I was like, so I told Jamie, I was like, I'm counting this as my free meal. <laughs> I was like, because I didn't track it. I like, I did put it into my, my, my fitness pal and put one serving in, but I definitely ate way more than one serving. <laughs> probably, I probably had, I like yeah. almost all of the bag. 
That's um, all right. <laughs> yeah, which was fine, except it screwed my stomach up real bad. So I was like, well, I won't oh, do that no. again. Because <laughs> it's the sugar, you know, it's the sugar. Mm. It's and it, like I told you, I have a small aversion to milk chocolate, and milk chocolate was in those. those ah, got it. Things. They were so milk. my whole stomach was just like, nope, don't do that again. I was like, okay, got it. All right. So I told you, I was like, that was kind of my free meal. <laughs> I was like, it is what yep. it is, you yep. know? Um, but like, uh, I knew I had a photo shoot yesterday, so I knew I had the shoot yesterday. So I planned all of my training ahead. So yesterday was my day off as far as resting is concerned. Um, and then, um, I had the majority of my food for the day when I finished up with the shoot, because typically I'll eat like little snacks and stuff. I have my breakfast and I'll eat little snacks the day while I'm doing a photo shoot just because I don't have time. And also I don't want to feel full when I'm taking yeah, pictures. I wanna, I mean, yeah, for sure. You know, so yeah. I ate everything from like 6 to 8 p.m. last night. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to be puffy for my freaking pictures tomorrow. Can- all that kind of stuff. That's what I felt like. And I woke up this morning and I was down in weight and I was like, all right, never mind. <laughs> I was like, that worked. <laughs> I'm like, cool, whatever. Um, so like right now, like the, I was saying this and even my photographer said this yesterday, because again, I've shot with him for like the last 13 years. He's like, this is the most muscular you have ever looked in front of the camera. I was like, I know because I'm, I'm still relatively lean, I'm pretty lean. Low, stage lean, but I have so much food in me now that I'm full and I'm round yeah. everywhere, you know? And I was like, I even said this to Jamie, my check-ins this morning. I was like, I really wish that this is what bikini looked like on stage. I was like, because it's so healthy and pretty and it's still, I'm still in really good shape, but I don't have, you know, veins everywhere or anything like that. I'm just round, you know? And I'm like, oh. Looks so much better like this. Sturdy. <laughs> I know, Sturdy right? but fit. Yes. And I try to yeah. tell people, and I was again I was saying this to Brian yesterday. I was like, this is the perfect time frame to take a, to do a photo shoot as long as you've not eaten like an asshole after your show. You know what I mean? Like, which I haven't done. I've eaten a lot, but it's all been used and it's all been good food and you know, all those kinds of things. So I've had my treats, just like I said, the pumpkin pie almonds. Like I've had, I've had my treats, you know, but I haven't gone overboard on anything. And, um, and I'm looking at my photos. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I just look full and round and healthy and all those kinds of things. So ladies, if you're looking to do a shoot, this is the way to do it. I'm telling you, this is the way to do it. You look really, really athletic and, and, and healthy and full, like, and even like, even my face, cause my face is filled out a little bit too. You know what I mean? So like my skin looks good and bright and healthy and face is a little bit rounder, you know, not quite as sunken in and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, this is where you want to do these photo shoots. You guys right here. Not so freaky looking. Yes. A couple weeks after your show. And again, I just, and I felt good. Like I felt good throughout the whole shoot. I didn't feel like tired or anything like that. That's the best. Lots of energy, you know, um, and just in general, like kind of feeling myself a little bit more. I don't, and I've said this before, like, I don't know about you, but I, it, we've talked about this before. I don't like the way I look when I'm, when I'm stage lean. So that comes across in photos, you know, when you are completely, you know, hundred percent feeling yourself in these photos, like it will come across that way. Yep. Um, you know, when you find your sweet spot, which right now this is kind of my sweet spot, then that's going to come across in those, yeah. in those photos and stuff too. So, um, you know, just in general, I was like, oh my God, these all look great. <laughs> It's like, you know, like, can I just stay here for like the rest of my life? Right. Because this would be fantastic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's like, um, everything's being used. The food's being used. The training, um, has been really good. I've been kicking my ass, um, like doing heavier and different t- stuff for my legs and stuff like that. Trying to stimulate them a little bit differently. Cause that's really where I need to grow mostly is my legs. Um, you know, and, and it just, it's, it just feels good. Like we talked about this last week. It's like those few, the first few weeks after your show are the best training weeks ever. So, yes. You know, you still got the, you got the energy now, but you still got that, that leanness from being stage lean. So it's like that perfect mix. And that's what I feel like right now. So exactly. Good. Yeah, exactly. Good. good. So, so we'll see what she says when she, when she responds back. I haven't checked. I don't know if she's, if, if Should she be responded. Soon. It's usually yeah, around, it's usually like around now when she's home. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it yet, but it'll be coming. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of where my week has been. So um, this coming week, I have a few things. I'm not going to really talk about it because there are surprises, so I can't really talk about them. But <laughs> but this week, I've got a few things coming up. So my schedule's going to be a little bit wonky, that kind of deal. I mean, it, as it as it gets during the holidays, so you just kind of have to. Kind of have to deal with it. You know what I mean? I will be home for Christmas. Um, you know, I wasn't home for Thanksgiving, but I will be home for Christmas. So um, we tend to try to do that. We tend to try to be home for Christmas. Like I mentioned, we typically will go 
to like one of our, you know, my in-laws or, or my family or something during, during Thanksgiving. And then Christmas is when we stay home. You know, we like to stay home with the dogs and things like that. And like you said, so no family, no you guys just do your thing. Right. I love, mm -hmm. that. I love that. Yeah. So we're going to go to a, like a, a ballet this weekend. We're going to, I've got a Christmas party oh, cool. here, you know, stuff like that. Like little, little holiday stuff. This is Christmas is Dan's favorite holiday of the year. So he's like, like every, cracking up every day I come home and there's like 15 Amazon boxes in front of our door. It's some of them from me. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm the one that buys a lot of them, but he does too. Right. <laughs> so it's like our whole house is just full of Amazon boxes. <laughs> now, are they for each other or are they for your family? No. So yes and no. So some of them are gifts. Um, some of them are like a lot of holiday decor. So all okay. of the decorations, that stuff, like most of the decorations that we have this year, we did not have last year, most of them. And that's all Dan's doing. So again, when I got home from Japan, he had decorated all that stuff. So like every day there's new decorations showing up. He's so good. He's so good. <laughs> I know, right? Everybody needs a Dan. I know. So, and we talked about the pool table. So we have the pool room now. So um, the next thing is he started putting stuff in the pool room, like with like bar stools and tables and decorations. And you got this digital dartboard and all this stuff. So it's like, Merry Christmas, babe. Here's my much. man cave. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And like, oh, he's uh, the, the funny thing that cracked me up the other day. He's like, I got us a Christmas gift. I was like, okay, what? He's like, it's a freezer for our meat. <laughs> I remember when Drew came home with one for the garage and he was like, you know, here's a gift for you for yeah, to put yeah. all your, all your this is, that's exactly what he said. He was like, well, this is for both of us. This is a freezer for our meat. Ladies who are in your twenties and not married right now, this is what you have to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to admit, I was excited when you, I, I was know, like, right? yes, I get to pull it out of the main freezer. I have room in there. These are the things that you get excited about as an adult, I guess. This is how you know you're getting yeah. older. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, we're buying a freezer for ourselves for Christmas. Yeah. So cool. Woo. Awesome. I know, right? <laughs> so, so that's, you know, because we're, we're also ordering, you know, just for meat to put in there too. So he's like, so it's all organic meat. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's our Christmas gift. It's got levels and we're going to do deer meat here yes. and chicken here. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Not even a joke. That's exactly nope, what's that's happening. No, that's yeah, literally. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. It's a bodybuilder's heaven. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our life right now. So like I said, ladies, that if you're in your 20s watching this, this is what you have to look forward to. So other than like that kind of gift, like do you guys buy each other gifts and like wrap it and like sit down on Christmas morning? Yes. And you do. Okay. But they're really just like little stocking stuffers and stuff. Okay. So you guys you know? have like a, like not like a limit, but. Yeah. It's just like if I, I again, like if, I, if I'm on Amazon just doing my normal shopping and I see something pop up, I'm like, oh, cute, like that. And I, you know, that kind of thing. It's not, yeah. and again, it's not a limit, but we're spending a couple hundred bucks, not a lot, you know what yeah. I mean? And um, just stuff that that's meaningful, you know, that kind of deal. Um, like last year, he got me this little, um, this little light up heart and etched in the heart is one of our pictures from our vow renewal with all of our dogs and everything. So it's like a little light up heart that goes on, our, on our um, mantle and all that kind of stuff. So stuff like that, you know, yeah. not, Maybe stuff that's fun. not like, yeah, exactly. That's got sentimental value, all that kind of stuff that that's not necessarily expensive or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, Drew and I used to do that and now it's like we don't do any gifts it's like honey do you want something just go buy it Merry Christmas like yeah. he took me shopping a couple weeks ago and that was that we we like going together like yeah. having that experience together yeah. that's and he he's been like not shopping at all my husband is like a, a female version like he loves to shop he loves expensive like whatever so I'm like oh my god there's two of us in this room <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem yeah exactly mm -hmm. exactly so um yeah we we haven't we haven't done Christmas gifts in the last couple of years the first couple of years we did we used to do like yeah. little gifts and like wrap yeah. them for each other and things like that and then with us being on the road all the time I mean last year I didn't get to put my Christmas tree up because the Olympia was December 17th yes. so yes. I wasn't home anyway we stayed in Vegas for a few days after that um, and then this year I didn't get to decorate because I thought I was going to be in Arizona. And now looking back in retrospect, I could have put my tree up here. It's in the garage, yeah. but yeah. So it's just weird. You know, the holidays yeah. have been kind of off this year, but I always say like my husband is my home, you know, right. like, he, he is, he is my holiday. So as long as I'm with him and my dogs, just like you, you said, like mm -hmm. that's Christmas to me, you know, if we're in the car right. driving, driving across to Arizona, as long as I'm with my family, like 
that's all I need, you know? Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And like, it's funny because you're right. Like the, the holidays have been a little bit wonky the last few years, things like that. But, um, Hey, you, like you said, home is where the heart is. Right. So, um, yeah. when, so do you typically, when do you typically put your Christmas tree up? If it was a normal year, when do you typically put it up? So my background, like with my childhood is like yeah. with my parents and, yeah. um, you know, briefly, both of them have, both have substance abuse issues. So it was weird growing up like Christmas. Some years were great. And like I had, did have traditions and the next year I would have nothing, you know? So yeah. Christmas is important to me because I wanted that tradition. I wanted yeah. that, you know, the, the difference, like every, every year at a certain date, start decorating and things like that. So in a normal routine, we usually waited till Thanksgiving or the day after Thanksgiving. My yeah. husband is a Grinch when it comes to Christmas because his family always had traditions. And that's why I love his family so much. Oh. His mom does the tree and then does up, you know, the same Christmas meal every year. And the mm -hmm. kids on Christmas Eve open up their stuff. And Drew just hates it, right? Because he's really? done it. Yes. He's such a Grinch when it comes to Christmas. He hates Christmas music. He thinks Christmas music should only be played the week of Christmas. I'm like... No, honey, people celebrate like two months in advance. Yeah. Like, oh, my god. So goodness. usually we do it the day after Christmas or Thanksgiving. He makes me wait okay. till Thanksgiving. Um, and then like no, no music or anything till Christmas wow. in my house. So in my car alone, I put on the Christmas station and I do yeah. some, some Christmas yeah, cheer, yeah, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> cannot do no, it for me. <laughs> it's like for me, it's the, the, the right after Thanksgiving is when we do it. Yeah. We've always done it that way. So. And like, and so has um, my husband, Dan. So like he grew up, his mom is, is from Spain. So they, you know, they, they did Christmas big, you know what I mean? Big, big, big. Like the first time I ever, I think the first time I ever met his family was Christmas time. I think it was Christmas Eve or something like that. And they had like their Christmas Eve party and it was just freaking crazy. You're like, I, I love this. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> literally. Yeah, it was Christmas. I remember now. Yeah, it was Christmas. It was Christmas Eve. And they had shots and everything. Like it was a party. Like it was a party. Can I come? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Danny even dressed up as Santa Claus. And like there's pictures of me drunk sitting on his lap. <laughs> hey, Mom. This, is a, this is meeting his family for the right. first time. <laughs> I'm like, here's my future wife. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Like she fits really great. really loves Christmas. <laughs> she fits in great. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so, so they do it big. Um, my family, when I was growing up, we, we always did it the day after Thanksgiving. So we would go, we always had a real tree. So the whole family mm. would go to a Christmas tree lot. My dad would chop the Christmas tree down, everything, the whole That's nine yards. That's so cool. And I'm from upstate New York, so it's usually snow. So we're dragging the, the tree through the snow and all this kind of stuff. Typical, like national lampoons christmas vacation style that's my that's favorite movie yes my favorite absolutely movie. i've watched it like five times already this season oh, just, just oh, this, the, yeah. oh this season this season this like, year oh, yeah, for yeah. Sure. this year mm -hmm. um because you know they just run it on, on those um, cable channels like non-stop so yeah. it's like, if it's on of course i'm turning it on that, yeah of course of course you're clicking that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know that was always our thing um when i was a kid i believed in santa claus a lot longer than everybody else did. And the reason why was because of my dad. So my dad would dress up as Santa every year. And every morning, every Christmas morning, my mom would come into, into our rooms, kids, and be like, I think Santa's here, I think Santa's here. And we would go creep out into the living room and my Santa, Santa would be putting presents under the tree. Right. And as soon as we saw him, he like my mom would obviously be loud at that point. And we, <laughs> <laughs> right? as soon as we saw him, he would run out the door like he would just take off out the door. And what he would do is he would go around the back and like, and, like take the costume off real quick and all that yeah. kind of stuff. We didn't know that as kids, though. Right. So. And it was always like because I grew up on a farm. So it was always my dad was out taking care of the animals. That's what was going on when my dad wasn't around for Santa to be there and my dad never caught Santa. So that, Man. Kept, yeah, that the kept me believing, you look, you, yeah. <laughs> believing in Santa for a very long time. And even like, like, like when my friends at school would be like, he doesn't exist. I'm like, no, he does. I catch him every Christmas morning. <laughs> and the kids like, what? <laughs> I know. Right. And I was like adamant that Santa Claus existed. He exists. Cause I catch him every morning. And um, where I figured out that Santa Claus does not exist is we got a pinball machine for Christmas one year from Radio Shack. 
And it from was, Radio Shack. From Sorry. Radio Shack. I know that I doesn't exist Radio anymore. Shack. I know I'm, I'm aging myself. <laughs> no. um, from Radio Shack. And so it broke and we took it back to Radio Shack to, to, to get it fixed. Right. I had to get a new one. And they were like, do you have your receipt? And my mom goes, yeah, I got my receipt. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Like, all of a sudden, everything. Why clicked. do you have a receipt? I was like, How do you have a receipt? <laughs> I was like, Oh my god, that's when I realized that was it. That's what did. How old were you? Do you remember? Like, were you fifth double digits? It was fifth grade. Wow, yeah, I remember it was fifth grade. I remember it like it was yesterday. I can like see it in it was like one of those things that's like imprinted in your brain. Yeah, I can see it. And I didn't like, I didn't let on at that point because I didn't want to. I didn't want to ruin it for like my little sister and all that kind of stuff that were yeah. right there. So I was like, after we left, I was like, <laughs> it's radio yeah. Shack. Yeah. After we left radio Shack, we got back home. I was like, dad, I was like, why does mom have a receipt <laughs> for the pinball machine? <laughs> and he just looked at me. I was like, okay, I know. I, I know. I tried <laughs> to deny it for years. That I know. Yeah. I tried. I tried. I tried to stand up for you for years. <laughs> I was like, like, all my friends at school, I owe them an apology. I know. I was like, why would my parents lie about that? You know. It's so sad. I was just talking about the, about this with my best friend and her son is almost six. And it's like at school already, they're already trying to deter him from Santa being real. It's six years old. I know. Like, I know. It's so sad. And she's like, how do I protect, you know, him and his yeah. innocence and, you know, the holiday. And it's like. Yep. You know, you gotta just do the best you can, but you get, it's it's so crazy. It's school now, it's six years old. All these kids are like, Santa's not real. I know. I mean, my friends were telling me from like from like kindergarten on that there was no such thing wow. as Santa, and I was like, Oh, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Those poor <laughs> parents to like not allow their children to like. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. So so that was a big thing that was that we did all the time, and then like same thing. We used to have um like Drew. We had the Christmas Eve dinners and. It was always the same meal for Christmas Eve. My family's big Catholic, so it was all, always fish for Christmas Eve and okay. um, potato soup. It was always the same thing. And it always made me laugh. It made me laugh when I brought Dan home for the first time because um, for Christmas, because again, he's, he's Spanish. My whole family is German. Okay. So we are very, very different cultures. <laughs> Meaning Germans, we are quiet, we are placid, we are like this all yep. the time. Spanish are like boop, boop, bow, 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 bow. Yep. <laughs> it's just like so whereas my when I went to my in-laws for the first time for Christmas, it was like everybody talking over everyone and like screaming and like party time and, and all great things, you know, fantastic. My family, it was like you could hear a pin drop at the same time. It's like, it, it's like, so here's my future husband. Is anyone going to yeah. ask him a question? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't want to get to know him. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like, that's just, that was, it was a, it was a very stark reminder of how different people can be. You know what yeah. I mean? And it was like, like my husband was like, man, he's like, you can literally hear like the spoons clanking against the plates and like, everybody's like, everybody's eating. Like you can hear it. I'm like, yeah, this is just, this is how we, this is how we are, you know? And it's funny because, you know, my, my husband has a very explosive temper and all that stuff. He's calmed down a lot, but when he was younger, it was, it was, it was big. Mine and, too. Yeah. And it was, yeah. It was like the whole Spanish blood and all that kind of stuff. And his mom would always tell him that he needed to marry somebody that was like Russian or German because we're very placid and we're very even and we'll balance, balance him out basically. That's, that's basically that's exactly what, what happened. Yep. Yeah. Well, yep. like they're just so passionate, even when mm -hmm. they're happy and they're talking, you know, and they're just, and no matter what, they're just passionate. Yep. I feel like it's easier for you, though, to go to their family because you can kind of yes. hide in the background, but you can mm -hmm. also insert yourself if you want to. Yes. It's really hard to go from that to your family where it's like you yeah. want to be animated, but you're not sure if it's okay. Like no one else yeah. is on this. And it's just right. Like a pinball can drop. There's no hiding. Nope. <laughs> so. Well, and my, family, my mom and dad went and met his his parents and stuff like that too. And they thought that they were just amazing. Like my parents mm -hmm. thought his parents were amazing. They loved how like full of life and everything they were and all that kind of stuff. Plus like I had never been really introduced to like Spanish food and things like that until I met his family. And they have such amazing food. Like they really, oh, God. all the, all of the, the uh, cured meats and all this kind of stuff. Like it was just, it's just really, really good stuff. So my parents, like my, my dad would have probably put on 20 pounds if he stayed there for, for any length of time. All they of thought, us would. Yeah, they thought the food was amazing. Um, wow. My father-in-law was a um, shorter cook in the Navy. So 
I did a couple of shows. Like I did a show in Virginia Beach where they lived and stayed at their house. And um, the following morning after the show, he made breakfast. And when I say he made breakfast, I mean, any kind of breakfast food you could possibly think of was on that table. Like wow. pancakes, waffles, toast, bacon, sausage, sausage, biscuits, gravy, everything. And I was like, I'm going to gain 20 pounds just at breakfast. <laughs> Like, that oh, sounds like the best brunch ever. So good. I was like, I can't, I'm like grits, oatmeal, everything, everything. I was like, I can't, I'm like, I can't live here, but I will enjoy this right now. For today, this is it. Yes. Oh, it was so good. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed going to his family for the food. <laughs> Maybe you guys can like make that a new tradition. I hey, know. can you come to my house and be Christmas? I know, friends? I know. But I, I, you know, and honestly, like it's been really cool, like to to get to know their traditions and stuff like that too. Because then, then they become our traditions, and we we make them a little different. And yeah, you adopt all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping that Christmas this year is night. Last year, you know, we had Olympia, and I got COVID right after the Olympia. That's right. So I got it on Christmas Day. So our Christmas was horrible. Oh, I didn't know you had it on Christmas. Like I got like a flu, you know, from wow. um, like from Olympia. I started being out there on Sunday. When I got home, I tested negative for COVID. So I didn't have COVID from the Olympia. But I think what happened was um, I started feeling better when I came home and I went to the gym and I trained. And I think that I caught COVID at that point. Yep. Um, and then Christmas Day, I had the worst headache I've ever had in my life. It just wouldn't go away. Like I couldn't get off the, yeah. get off the couch. So yeah. I went to the yeah. emergency room. Yeah, I went to the emergency room the following day. And um, so our Christmas last year sucked. We canceled our New Year's plans, everything. Because again, I've got Cuties Conquer the stage coming up in January. So I'm like, I can't be sick during this time. I have to just sit here and do nothing for the next two weeks and just make sure it goes away. Yep. You know, yep. so it's a really, really bad time to get COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, you so, know, what's funny is all of my uh, girls were checking in this week. And I mean, probably I heard from, I would say literally eight to 10 of them. They're all getting sick again. It's yeah. like going around again. Yep. Yep. And they're like, I'm testing negative for COVID. And I'm like, it might be a different variant. Like they yep. think it's COVID. Yeah. <sighs> that or just, a, just a, a segment of the flu too, because the other part of it is along with, you know, and the... COVID stuff, a lot of people have forgotten about the flu just being around. But the flu kills, kills people. Absolutely. The flu, the flu kills people. So you got to be careful of all that stuff, you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm doubling up on the on the vitamin C, all that stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I own all of it. Yeah. Like, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting sick this Christmas. Not happening. No. I know. I'm, I'm like knocking on wood. I'm like, I right? feel good. Me too. Like, Stay right now on top of my vitamins i keep telling my girls like stay on top of your freaking vitamins double up on yes. that vitamin c right now like now is not the time to pull back on vitamins absolutely and like you know part of me is like because i just got off of contest prep so you know your body goes through a lot of changes during this time frame too so you gotta be careful of that kind of stuff and again going and eating like an ass is not a good idea right now too because then inflammation inflammation is a huge killer huge killer so you got to be careful with inflammation, all that. You got to keep yourself regulated as best you can. Um, yeah. Speaking of changes, I feel like my body this week, I've been having a lot of cramps. So I haven't had a period in a really long time, which is normal with how much I've yeah. been prepping. But yeah. um, my body the last this last week has shot up and shot up in weight, which mm. I expected at this point. My body always does this, like five to six weeks post show it like will hang out as close to stage weight as possible and then once like all the fat burners come out and then as my hormones start to rebound i i get this like big shift up in weight so i'm sitting yeah. right now about 10 pounds above stage weight and then i just feel very like hormonal like oh. i've been having some like really big cramps over the last couple of days which i haven't had cramps in a while um my face is breaking out and then i just kind of feel like estrogen coming back on so like yeah. a little bit more watery and just changes to mood and like things like that like very emotional like i can cry right now just like thinking about moving or thinking yeah. about the electrician being behind yeah. like that's not like me oh my yeah. gosh my computer <laughs> So anyway, this is, that's been interesting. I wonder if I'm going to throw a period. I don't know. But yeah. That's definitely what I'm like kind of feeling this week. And okay. I'm hope. I'm, I mean, I'm hopeful. I told you it would be great if I could get my period back like closer to this week than usually it has to get to 135, my, my weight for my period to come back. And I'm sitting right now around 128. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Same thing with me. Like, 
the only time I ever really, and I didn't really miss it. My period just came late was last year when I got off contest prep. So my, my body went through, I think it was like six weeks or something like that, where I didn't get a period kind of thing. And then it came back and I was, I was regular at that point. So, yeah. um, we're coming up on, on a month since Hawaii. So yeah. I just got the notification on my phone yesterday that my period should be starting, you know, any, any day now, you know? So, um, I started to kind of feel it a little bit yesterday. I felt like, like the, like you said, you start feeling a little bit watery, a little bit like just a little off, you know, well, like, yeah, a little watery, a little soft, yeah. a little yeah. off like energy wise. Yeah. I started feeling that, that last night. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this, and this is kind of normal. So then today, like I said, I dropped weight, which that's kind of normal for me. And then, um, like tomorrow I'll probably go up and wait. I'm waiting okay. to see. But tomorrow I'll likely go up because that's what happened. Again, that's what happened in Hawaii. I went Hawaii. down and then I went up. Yep. So if that happens, I'll probably get probably be getting my period on like Saturday or Sunday, something like that. At so. least we'll get it before Christmas. I know I'm all pain. <laughs> <sighs> right now I don't really care. As long as it comes and as long, right. As long as yes. Exactly. I got nothing. I got nothing in the way. Like you know, right. I don't have to worry about being stage lean. I was actually concerned because I had the photo shoot yesterday. I was concerned about getting it during the photo shoot. Well, you um, look really good during that photo shoot. Thank so. you. Thank you're you. Welcome. I was like, I was very happy. Like I said, having a little bit of water and stuff on you when you're in a shoot is not a bad idea. Like, it's actually good. Like, it again, it keeps you a little fuller and things like that. When so. you're as lean as you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so going back to the tanning thing, I put liquid sunrays on again and I did put a lot of lotion underneath my glutes oh, this okay. whole last week. And I put it on before I put the tan on uh, Tuesday night before my, before my shoot and no splotches on my, on my butt. So, okay. like, all right, well, I just got to lotion it up. That's, that's all it is. I got a lotion, lotion, lotion. That's it. So figured it out. So that's, that's a good thing. At least I got that piece um, set aside. And I know, I know I just got to add, I, I was, I was always worried to put that much on, but like I put two layers of lotion on before I put the tan on. That's what so, I was just about to ask. You did it right before you put the tan on two layers. Yeah, because I put one layer on and it absorbed like that, like immediately. Because again, and it's like, like it's mm. so exfoliated and stuff like that. I was like, oh, I'll put a little bit more on. So yeah, I did. I put two layers of lotion on in that in that area before I put my tan on. And it didn't it didn't adhere at all. So I was like, all right, cool. Like not like badly. Like it right, right, right. Even. Like on the even. spots. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was even when I when Perfect. I woke up. There. So I was like, all right, cool. I should have taken You're like, learning even months. more. I know, right? Continuing to learn here at this point. I know, I know. I wish I learned it before the show, but whatever. <laughs> Listen, if you don't learn something from a show, then, you, you know, know, what did you take I away know. from the experience? That's what you took away. Right. Well, and, the, and, I'm, and I know you're probably like this too, but I'm like a dog on a bone. Like as soon as I see something that needs to be fixed, I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to fix right this. now. It's going to get fixed. Oh, One yeah. way or another, it's going to get fixed. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, and the sooner I can figure out, the sooner yeah. that my brain can be at peace. <laughs> yeah. Well, just like I changed my transition into my front pose because I noticed like when I was on stage, that's when I would let go of my core. So I'm like, well, this has to, this has to change. It's funny how things in theory are different than things in practice. And I was thinking about that this morning when I was doing my check-ins, because the reason why I transitioned the way that I did into my front pose is because I felt, I thought that when I put my hand on my leg, it would actually cover my waistline a little bit while I transitioned. So if I did let it go, I would be okay. It's not a big deal. In reality, it actually drew attention to it. So when I saw it on stage, I was like, actually, me putting my hand there made it worse. You know what I mean? So I was like, that's why I, I ended up going changing the transition completely. And I was like, this is way better because now my stomach just stays tight the whole time. So, Perfect. you know, that's, that's the thing. It's like a lot of people try to do their posing or do their training or do their diet through what they see on YouTube or whatever. It doesn't translate, doesn't no. translate to real life a lot of the times. So, right. you know, that's where you, that's where you gotta, that's where you gotta put into practice. You just gotta put into practice. Are you talking about this pose? I'm going to stand up. Yep. Are you talking about an entry pose where you go like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what a lot of girls, what they do is they tend to lean over. They lean over. Right. And yes. then that, yeah, I, I've been pulling that out a lot in my girls yes. posing because yeah, I don't, I don't do the lean over cause you're right. I do the exact yeah. same thing that you're talking about. I pull it out of everybody's posing because you're right. They let go of their stomach. Yeah. What I do oh, is I I stay putting that yeah. hand there. It just, that's where your hand your goes, eye goes. Your, your eye goes, goes right to that's it. The last thing to, to land. That's right. Your yeah. eye goes right to it. So I, I do. I stay up tall, and all I do is put my hand on my thigh and open up. 
But again, like we just said, that's the last thing to move. So that's where your eye goes. And whatever your hand is by is where your eye goes to. And that's exactly what I did. Every time I was watching my, my routine, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why didn't I see that before I did it on stage? Like, yep. why, I'm like, why didn't I see that? You know what I mean? Like, oh, God, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. hindsight it. 2020. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, oh. And that, and again, that goes back to why a lot of us like to get on stage again and again, because we see things like that. We're like, oh, that's so fixable. That's so easily fixed. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm yes. just like, oh my God, why did I see it? So now I want to go on stage and fix it, you know? Right. And but see talk- it under the lights and yes. yeah, bring it all together. There's, it's a difference of posing in your living room by yourself in yes. front of your phone, than posing in front of the judges yes. on the stage, feeling the stage, feeling the lights, feeling yep. the adrenaline of the crowd being out there. It's completely yep. different. Completely different. <laughs> completely so. different. And it's like, and again, it's one of those things that even sometimes some of these things, coaches don't even see it until you get up there. Right. You know, and that was, you know, we talked about this from Hawaii to Japan too. So like I said, my feedback changed where, you know, in Hawaii, they told me I had enough size and then Japan told me I needed to grow. Well, the difference is, is that I dropped six pounds. So, you know, my physique looked different and you don't know until you diet down what you got underneath there. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, I'm looking at myself from Japan and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I need more legs. Absolutely. Like I didn't look like that in Hawaii, but I was also puffy in Hawaii. Right. So it's like, you know, it's like, no, I absolutely need more size. I definitely do. And it's, and the other part of it too, is like, and I talk about posing on both sides in the front pose. So I pose on my left side and I like my left side for some reasons. Like I have better glute pop on my left side. Um, my waistline is smaller on the left side but my legs are also smaller on the left side than my right. So where my right side is better, my right side is better than my shoulder. Um, My waistline is more defined, meaning like it looks like I have abs versus my left side. You've got an indent from my, from my rib cage. Okay. So, and my glute pop isn't as good on my right side um, in that front pose. So, you know, we go back and forth between it and I'm like, just overall, because I'm, I'm a tall girl, I need to look like I have more size. So we always do the right side because that's my more muscular side than my left. So, but there's, there's things on the left side that I like about it, but looking at it, I'm like, no, but I look even thinner on my left side. So my feedback would definitely have been, you need to grow on my left side, hundred percent. So I'm like, well, I want to get to the point where like, I could actually pose that left side and not look like I have to grow. Have to grow. Uh-huh. So that's, a, that's a decent amount of size I got to put on, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But it's, it's a better, it's just a better flow from my waistline into my glute on the left side versus the right. So it's like, you got to pick and choose your poison. And right now my, my feedback is always, you need more size. So going to the left side is not the right solution. Then you're going to pick this, the, the more muscular side. Right. Right. Yep. So, and again, those and are that might things. change after your improvement season. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You know, so that brings us to the next thing. So our, our topic today was talking about holidays. We wanted to talk about her traditions and stuff like that, but also we wanted to go into goals for the new year. So not just goals on physique wise and things like that, but what are some of the goals that you have set aside for 2024? I pull them up. Like, my <laughs> I, well, part of me, um, I do this every year. This is okay. something that I encourage my girls to do too. So I'll just show you the way that I set it up. So these are I will statements. So 2024 okay. I wills. So I will do X, Y, Z. I will be this. I will try to do whatever. So I start with some I will statements. And then I break my goals up into professional, personal, me as a wife, okay. and then me as an athlete. And then um, I always put like shows that I'm interested in doing for next year or whatever. Okay. Um, so professionally, I broke it down into obviously me coaching and then push. So a couple things is I want to get at least two pro cards next year on my team. Okay. Um, I want to get at least three overalls and then in the MPC. Um, and I want to keep my roster at about what it is right now. Um push obviously we're moving into pushes my gym we're moving into a new location so i have some sales goals um 
And then obviously leadership goals as well. Like, you know, I lead a team of five different people, you know, and I want to make sure that I'm showing up for them. And especially with this move, I am moving, um, you know, to Scottsdale because my staff is so good at what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, people ask me all the time, like, you're getting ready to make this move to the secondary home. What are you going to do with the gym? The gym runs itself by itself all the time. So, yeah. but I still have to make sure that I'm showing up as a leader for them because they're, they are so good because I've taught them well, but mm-hmm. I don't want to continue teaching them and educating them and supporting them however they need. Um, as a wife, I also set personal goals there. I'm not going to go into too much of those, but you know, I think it's important to, you know, look at all of your roles when you're doing goal setting and all, and also have that conversation with your spouse as well, you know, making sure that you got, you know, I would tell people all the time, as far as like, you know, marriage advice, like to me, a great relationship is one where you guys, where each cup or each individual grows separately. But mm-hmm. also you have to grow together because yeah, you can't have absolutely. one person that wants to grow and one person that wants to stay because then you lose that togetherness at the end. So I think it's important to talk about that with your spouse. What are each of your per- personal goals so you can keep each other accountable? And then mm-hmm. at the same time, what are the goals for your marriage that year? You know, yep. to elevate your marriage and to continue to grow. So that's something that Drew and I have talked a lot about uh, when we were in Vegas a couple weeks ago. So that was cool. Um, as an athlete, I wanted to qualify for the Olympia. So yay, I already yay. got one, one off my list. <laughs> Checked off. <laughs> um, I have the night show of the Olympia as a goal. Okay, yep. Uh, this year. Um, I want to do three pro wins between now and the next Olympia. I think that would be great for my resume. Um, and then I wanted to go back to Tahoe. So okay. that was, yeah, so just some silly, there's some silly things on here. There's some yeah. like, intimate things on here. Um, you know, there's money goals on here. Mm-hmm. There's uh, personal goals, like uh, personal development courses I want to do or educational uh, courses that I want to do. I try to think of like everything, mm-hmm. you know, like goals, goals are really what, what it means to you. Right. But um, I also think too, that some of the goals need to be scary. Right. Yeah. So sometimes when I was goal setting, I would always pick things that I knew I could do. And I feel like that's, that kind of eliminates the point. Like, so try to, you know, whatever you think that number is or whatever you think that goal is, it's going to be easy. Try to go a little bit more, you know, really yeah. try to push yourself. That's the whole point of goal setting. <laughs> so that I was going to ask you about this. Cause you mentioned the, the resume with your, um, your competing and all that. So um, have you thought about applying to the Arnold? I, don't, I, I know you, you said you didn't want to compete again until like August this year. So I'm assuming you probably didn't apply this year, but is that something that you're thinking about for next year? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I considered applying for the Arnold this year, but I knew that I needed to grow, you know, mm-hmm. and I, there wouldn't have been enough time after the Olympia for this Arnold to make the improvements that I wanted and needed to make. Yeah. Um, I am very highly focused right now on my training. I want to make sure that by the time that we prep next, I have enough tissue that, that I need. Um, you know, the, the, the hard part is, for every pro is keeping that tissue through yes. the, the, the long deficits, right? Yeah. So I'm really trying to almost overgrow my glutes right now and overgrow my shoulders, knowing that I always do a little bit of a longer season, which is fine. That's that's where we're at in this point. Um, so I would love, Arnold is definitely on my list. Uh, Pittsburgh Pro is on my list okay. of, of ones I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, these are all shows that are usually early on in the year. Yes. So right after the Olympia, if I know that I need to make improvements, those shows are not going to be on my radar until I know that right. I can show up. You know, I'm not showing up to the Arnold just to apply and, you know, say that I did it. I want to show up correct. Right. So definitely right. next year. And I think, too, that me talking about, you know, updating my resume getting my resume as a pro and things like that, that that's only going to help me for next year's Arnold. Right. Okay. You know, the more, the more yep. shows I win, bigger shows that I can win and things like that. So yeah, I'm excited. You know, at the end of the day, my only goal is to beat me and yeah. I'm excited to see, you know, how I can change. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, you've got to have those, you know, realistic goals and then you've got to have those scary goals. So like a realistic goal is to beat yourself. Yes. A scary goal is to get to see the Arnold and actually make, make a name for yourself the Arnold you know what I mean that's a scary goal you know yeah Yeah. um and same thing with with me like we do this every year where we do um three days myself and Dan and we just sit down and we go through the whole business what we did this year what we want to do next year set our goals all those kinds of things um and I can remember this was gosh was this three or four it was like four years ago or something like that he wrote down a specific revenue goal for our business to generate and I was like you're full like oh that'll never happen It'll never happen. And then we we hit more than that the next year. And I was like, 
We did that. Damn. I was like, well, damn, we did that. So yeah, so it's it's definitely possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, there's just, a, but you, until you, like we talked about kind of saying it out loud, until you put it down, say it out loud, put it on paper or whatever it may be, it's not real yet. You know, you got it. Yeah. You got to kind of put yourself, put your feet to the fire. And that's what we did. And that's what we do every year. So same yeah. thing. We, we kind of sit down like you do and we kind of write out those goals every year, all those kinds of things. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to go into specific, um, you know, cause a lot of the stuff is like game plan behind the scenes, but we, in order to get there, we got to, we, we got a game plan. But, you know, one of the things that I can say that uh, we want to do business wise this year is um, not chase quite so many rabbits because uh, I feel like a lot of the time I get very diverted because I've got 15,000 different things going on at once. And I'm like, no. And then what ends up happening is you end up doing everything like half assed. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to do things. If I'm not going to do it right, I don't want to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? So we're really paring things down this year. We've got it, you know, we've got like three things we really want to focus on as far as this is what we're going to build it up. And the rest of the stuff is just, it's just, it's not going to get any attention. It's going to go over here because if we give it any attention, then these other things are getting, aren't getting enough. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, I find myself being that person that, if somebody asks me to do it, I'm going to find a way to make it work. And no is a valid answer, right? There is. So I'm like, I have to ha have to remember that no is a complete sentence. That's something my one girlfriend says all the time. She says, no is a complete sentence. You don't have to have a reason, nope. but no is a complete sentence. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. You don't have to give a reason. You just don't, don't do yeah. it. Right. Yeah. And it's hard for us. It is. You know, we're, we are in the service industry and right. we love to say yes. And yep. I tell people all the time, my availability is what makes me great, but it's also my crypt tonight. Cause I'm, That's right. I'm sometimes I'm too available. Too available. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, definitely setting that. I've gotten a lot better about that over the years. You know, one of the things as far as like answering text messages and phone calls and emails, so I have to do it 24 seven. Yeah. Now, now I don't. Now there's certain hours where even if I see it come in, I'm not responding to it. I'm like, sorry, you know, yeah. it, it's not an emergency. Your emergency is not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> Your emergency is not my emergency. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, there's certain things, of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up the phone for. You know, absolutely. But absolutely. most of the time, like I tell people all the time, like all I do, all I do is I make your suit, your posing, your hair, makeup, whatever. That is not an emergency situation. These are not nine one one situations. Correct. correct. <laughs> like you can figure it out. You're yes. gonna be okay. Right? It can wait till the morning. Yes, yes. it's gonna be okay. Just chill, breathe. You know those kinds of things. I'm mean, like, it's not a life or death kind of situation. Yes. So, yes. I'm just saying. Um, and a lot of times, you know, and my clients are great about this too. Like I have one girl that uh, she checks in with me with religiously. She does a phenomenal job. She's pro and um, master's pro does really, really well. And she'll send me her videos, things like that all the time, which is fantastic. And she doesn't freak out if I don't respond to her immediately because she's just checking in to make sure that she's good. Like she, and she does this during peak week. She'll send me a video every day and that's totally fine. And I will respond to her, but sometimes it's not right away, <laughs> you know, and she doesn't freak out about it. She's like, I'm just giving you this because I want you to see it. You know, that's it. You got your notes for me and give them to me. If not, I'll, I'll, I'm good, you know? Right. And, um, and, and those are the kinds of people that I'm like, okay, when I get to my, to my work hours, this is when I respond to you and things like that. And again, she doesn't freak out about it, you know? Um, and that's totally fine. I'm good with that. You know, um, yeah. feel free to, I tell people all the time, like, feel free to send me stuff all the time. I, I'm good with that. Just, just know. <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm going to respond to them when I'm responding. When you can. <laughs> you know, yeah. stuff like that. So, um, so anyway, so going back to, you know, one of my goals for this year is to really hone in and focus on those, those three bullet points that we have set aside versus everything else. Right. Yeah. Um, cause I'm, I'm, you know, I'm also that person, I'm an idea person. So when something pops into my head, I'm like, Oh, that would be so cool. Let's do this. You know? And I'm just like, but you've got 15 other things to do first. You yeah, know what I mean? That's the and trouble I, of being a business owner. We're all innovators. Yeah. We're all thinking of things all the time. And it's like, sometimes you still got to focus on these three things first. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, so there's that, um, you know, same thing. We, we always set personal goals too, as far as what we want to do with the house, you know, when we want to go do our little mini staycations, which we do all the time, you know, stuff like that. Because you have to, again, you have to treat your relationship like a business as well. If you don't give your, your relationship 
time and schedule time, like we've talked about this in the relationships and sex episodes, stuff like that, it will fall off, you know, yeah. just like anything else. If you don't keep up with it, if you don't keep watering your yard, your yard's going to turn brown, you know? Yes. So you got to schedule those, those watering times in those, for those fertilizer times in, you got to put them on the schedule. So, you know, those things, we have those set things set aside. Um, going back to the competing arena, same thing with you. Like I want to create a resume this year, but in order for me to do that, I got to get better, you know, and I'm going into the master's category. So it's different. So, you know, I, I would love to be able to get on stage sooner rather than later, but at the same time, I want to come back with a better package because that is an easy goal that I know I can realistically hit. And the scary goal is creating that resume that will help me towards the master's Olympian next year. You know, Correct. so I'm kind of in the same spot you are just in the master's arena versus the open. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, yeah. So those are the areas that I'm focusing on now. And, and again, it's not so much like you said, you want to three pro pro wins. That's not where I am yet. It's more like, I just want to be competitive in the master zone because I haven't done it yet. Right. You know? So I have to start somewhere. And then once I get on the stage, then I can adjust my goals, you know? Right. Yeah, and exactly. Then, and, and that's the thing too. People, people need to realize too. It's like, yeah, you set these big, scary goals. Like I said, my big, scary goal is qualify in, you know, for the master's Olympia. Right. You know, that's the big, scary goal. But in between, there's a lot of little things that have to happen, you know? Right. So you have to adjust as you go along. Um, and again, I, I am not one that stays in prep for a long period of time. You know, I do two shows and I'm done. I'm out. Right. You know, <laughs> done. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. That might change though. Exactly. If now I need to build a resume, way. if I need to build a resume, then I'm going to have to be able to maintain and sustain my physique longer. Right. Yes. So that's actually something I've been paying attention to with this reverse diet because you know, again, when I was doing the shoot yesterday and things like that, you know, Brian, my photographer, he's like, I, he's like, I don't know how tight you need to be. He's like, well, I feel like you could get on stage in like a week. And I was like, nah, probably not a week. <laughs> I was like, but give Maybe me like two. two. Yeah. I said, give me two or three. Yeah, yeah. I could do it. I'm yeah. like, I would just pull all the, pull all the stuff out that's in, inflammatory and that would suck me right back down. Um, you know, I'd probably have to pull up a couple, pull off a couple of pounds of body fat. So yeah, give me like three weeks ish. I probably could. Yeah. You know, and knowing that I can stay in that zone, even though I've been eating a lot more and all this kind of stuff is good. You know, that gives me that gives me you know something to work towards for next year. So it's like I can give myself a couple weeks break, reassess and then come back to the stage again if I need to. You Absolutely. Know I mean? Absolutely. So. There's definitely values in diet breaks with a long season like mm -hmm. that, you know, yep. taking two, two weeks off from the stage, getting food a little bit higher then pulling it back down again. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can do a lot for you mentally and physically with a long Absolutely. season, but Absolutely. it's, but it's structured, you know, you yes. go two, three shows, you start to feel that burnout, you communicate with your coach. Okay. We want these shows, but we need to wait four weeks so that we can mm -hmm. have some deload and a diet break and pull some inflammation off and get you better mentally. And, and yep. that reset can help. And there are some athletes too, that go through that diet break and then they just decide, I want to stay here. I'm done. That's right. And that's okay too. And yeah. you know, but either way, it allows you to kind of take that second reset and, that's why pros can do multiple shows. I know that's like kind of like a big topic is like, why do some, you know, athletes just keep competing? There's lots mm -hmm. of reasons why, but one of them is because usually your first show of the season is not your best look. Mm -hmm. That's like where you're showing up. You, you're still maybe two or four pounds above stage weight. Yep. And then you go into the next peak week and you tighten up a little bit more. And usually that second or third show, now you're showing up right. your absolute best, right? And you're taking the judges feedback and you're kind of fine tuning each time. And if, your placings are getting better and better. Why, mm -hmm. why would you stop at that point if you're right. not burnt out and things like that? Some of them are doing it just for the money. Like, there, yep. listen, there is some money that is awarded on a top five, right? So I, I, if I was stage lean and I felt like I could grab a couple thousand dollars, you know, competing a few weekends in a row, that would be nice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, there's different reasons for different folks. But I mean, yep. for you next year, it's going to be different because yep. your physique for the master's category is now so close. Right. You know, yep. and you have a good amount of time right now to put on that density in the legs and your training, your training's just switched up and things like that. So we'll see, yep. we'll see how your season goes. And the food. So this is something I saw in a, um, in a Facebook post, uh, yesterday, day, day before something like that. Um, there was a, a person in there that was concerned about adding in, uh, I think she got, I can't remember what, what the numbers were. It was like an extra 200 grams of carbs or something like that under her reverse diet out of her show. And she didn't want to eat it because she was afraid she was going to put on body fat too fast. Um, so it was a big jump. And 
everybody in the comments, which they were correct, were saying, you know, um, you need that food right now. Like that's why you have a coach, you know, your, your coach is monitoring you. They're giving you that food because right now your body is in a deficit and depleted and it needs the food. You're not going to put on body fat like that. And as long as you're checking in with your coach, and you're not eating like crap, you know, you're going to be okay. Um, and that's what I said to, for my own benefit too, like, and this isn't going to last forever, you know what I mean? But that those couple of weeks post-show, like we talked about before, you can make some significant gains. You know, your body is still revved up really high. You can put that extra food to use, which is what I'm doing right now. You know, going into, into peak week for Hawaii, my calories were just under 1,600. I think they were like 1,570 or something like that for my, oh. my calories per day. Um, and then as soon as I got off of Japan, my calories went up and over 2,000 immediately. Um, and then this last week I was at 2150 or whatever it was, plus the free meals, um, since I've been off stage and that's a significant jump, you know, um, five, six, 700 calories, depending on how you want to break up that, fr that free meal, a free meal per week. And then to still be dropping weight, Correct. that's a significant jump. Now, again, that's not going to continue forever where you can continue to pull the, the food up and continue to drop weight Draw, right. forever. Right. But you can't be afraid to do that because your body needs it right now. You know, your body needs the extra food, needs to come out of that deficit, needs to put the body fat back on because your hormone balance needs to come back into play and all that kind of stuff. So don't be afraid. You know, we, we talked about the reverse dieting before where people eat way too much. Well, there's also those people that don't eat enough. And they're Correct. scared. They're scared Absolutely. to put that food back and the nutrients back into their body. And you're really doing yourself a disservice with that too. Yeah. So again, that, you know, keeping that monitoring aspect in there is important because if you are gaining weight really fast, then you got to reassess it and you got to probably pull some things back, add some more cardio, whatever, you know, you, that's why you monitor with your coach. That's why but it'll coach. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And why it's important to keep the coach during your off season. We talked yeah. about before. Yeah. You know, but don't, don't be afraid to eat either. Right. Yeah. So, right. and I get both sides too, you know, from being a coach and an athlete, yeah. you know, that's why I have a coach because, yep. you know, I checked in with Jamie last week and I'm like, are we okay? I don't even yeah. know what normal is for me anymore. Yeah. And she's like, we're fine. We're fine. You look good. Like, uh -huh. but you know, I can't be a unbiased judge of myself. Right. You know? And I'm still super close to post show. I, we yep. have to remember that hormones are still altered, hunger cues are still altered. You know, if we're getting cycles back, the week leading into your cycle and the week of your cycle, the monologue starts to change. Does anybody oh. realize that? It is a very real thing what your sex hormones can do to your monologue and what you mm -hmm. tell yourself. This past week, I've been picking myself apart, but then I started to get that ghost period or that cycle type symptoms like, this, this is, is hormone right. related. Yeah. But you can't trust yourself when mm -hmm. you're still this close to, to post show. Yep. Um, and that's why it's important to lean on your coach during that time. And then yeah. you're right in the middle of the holidays. I, yes. you know, the season is over right in the middle of the holidays where of course we're eating more calories. Everybody's bringing cookies and things to yep. work and things like that. It's a hard, it's a hard season. I get both sides for sure, but it is, it's important that if you stick with your coach post show and they want an extra 200 grams of carbs after that show, they are doing it for a reason. There is, right. And maybe you should ask your yep. coach if you're unsure and say that, hey, I'm uncomfortable with this amount of food. Can you tell me the reason why? What? Yep. If, why am I doing this? What am I supposed to be feeling? And I don't know, me as an athlete, I like to know why I'm doing things. And then that helps me to complete the task. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and going back to, like you said, your, your brain gets all messed up during this time too. Like I mentioned, I got the notification on my phone yesterday about my period coming, right? And I knew that already because I track everything, right? But little things like that can all of a sudden like flip and be like, oh, that's why I feel like this. I got it, you know? Yep. Like I was noticing it two days ago where my abs don't look quite as hard anymore. And I'm like, huh, that's because of my hormones. Yeah. And I knew, I knew that's why that's happening, you know, plus, you know, plus the food and all that kind of stuff too. But it's like, yeah. if, if you can just rationalize those feelings sometimes then it makes a whole lot more sense yes you know? I'm yes like, oh yeah that, make, that makes perfect sense why i look like this you know yes yeah so, and yeah. hormones are 
They're tricky because they, yeah. they affect so much. They affect what you look like on the scale. They affect your skin. They affect mm-hmm. how bloated or inflamed you. I mean, there's so many things that it can affect and it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's, you could be doing everything right. And still that scale's creeping up because your hormones are fluctuating, That's right? right? That's what's going on with me right now. I've followed my reverse diet for the last six days. My weight just keep going up and up and up and up, but yeah. I'm obviously feeling signs and changes internally. And it's really important to kind of be in tune with your body at that point. So, you know, kind of what I say, what's real and what's yeah. temporary and what's not real <laughs> with your clients when they get out of a contest prep do you have a specific amount of food that you will bump them up or something like that is it what do you have what is your go-to every client is different so yeah. i talk i talked to them about that before the show you know some say hey jay i need i need high macros right away you know that's that's how i think i'm going to stay on task some say hey keep my calories a little bit more moderate and i'm going to add in one on track meal per week um, most, I will say, want their macros up high out the gate. Mm-hmm. Some want to keep cardio in super high and they almost want to like, you know, slowly reverse diet just, just the other way. They want to slowly bring cardio down and slowly raise it up because they want to stay as lean as possible. That's mm-hmm. mostly for the women that I have observed that have had, um, history of eating disorders okay. or body dysmorphia. They kind of just want that very slow transition, which is fine. Yep. So it really, it depends. You really mm-hmm. have to type into the athlete's psyche at that point mm-hmm. and individually what they need or how their body's going to respond best. Some t- have told me, Hey, I want my calories up right away. And they're more of that, uh, body dysmorphia or anorexia, bulimia type background. I'm like, Hey, we can do that, but I want to but. protect your mental. Maybe we start small for a couple of weeks, see how you're feeling. And then two or three weeks post-show, if you still want that high boost, then we go from there. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. yeah. It depends. No, that makes sense. Makes sense. Do you, when do you have people do their blood work? Um, that's funny. We were just talking about this yesterday with Drew. I usually have them go about four to eight weeks post-show. Yeah. Um, we know if they go get their labs done immediately after the show, it's going to say that every, you know, everything's out of whack. So four weeks is about a good enough time to pull cardio down, <laughs> um, get food into a good spot. They have a little bit more body fat, but I will also go off their biofeedback. So if they still feel like they're super fatigued or if they're still super lean at that point, I'll make them wait for maybe another eight weeks. Okay. And when their biofeedback and their hunger cues and things like that are just when they're feeling a little bit more normal and stabilized, then I'll send them to go. Okay. So usually it's between that four to eight week time span. Yeah. I'm doing, Jamie had, wants me to do it in a couple of weeks, which would put me at about four weeks for me. Yeah. You also have to think too, if there's like things involved, you know, peds or things like that, yeah. if we're pulling those out, you want to make sure those are fully cleared. So it again, depends on the athlete, but no yeah. sooner than four weeks post-show. Yeah. I mean, any, any lab work before that is just going to show that everything is in the tank and nothing's healthy. And I'm trying to remember what I did last year, I think, because my last show was, June. And I don't think I did my labs until August, maybe. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Pretty mm-hmm. sure it was August. Yeah. And even then, like my, my cortisol was really high. My T3 was really low, something like that. But, you know, when going through and analyzing everything, they're like, really what this comes down to is your rest. Like if you, if you get more sleep and you get more rest, then all these other things are going to balance right back out. And that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> yeah. See, like my thing is like the caffeine right now. It's like, obviously my caffeine is high when I'm in season. And then I try yeah. to pull caffeine down after season, but because Same. of the craziness of my life right now, caffeine is still just as high as it was in prep, yeah. which is just what I need right now. However, I know my adrenals probably need the, need the rest. Yeah. Um, but again, I already know that, right. If, if yep. it's, if it's, I know it's an issue. I know it needs to be fixed. It's just not the time right now to fix it. Other than that, my, my labs are great. Now, mm-hmm. if I was experiencing something else like insulin resistance or my, my yeah. sex hormones weren't rebounding well or whatever the case may be, that would be, need to be the first thing now that I need to address. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, you know, and that's the thing too, is like, I tell client, my athletes all the time. I mean, they have to get lab work done, but I, you know, athletes that aren't on my team, don't get the lab work done. If you're not willing to do anything about what they say, True. because you know, at what's that point, point it's like, what's the point exactly? Yeah. Like, you know, um, if it's you, after the show, it's important for you to pay to get those labs done and then mm-hmm. pay for the supplements or whatever you need to make sure that you kind of rebound some things to, to get yourself back online. If your cholesterol looks bad, if your liver yeah. doesn't look good, like it's important to make mm-hmm. sure that those things are getting healthy again. That's the point of an off season is to yep. reset, get re-healthy, put yourself in the best place possible for that next cutting phase. Well, and even if you're not a competitor, this is something that people should just be doing in general anyway, to have a baseline. 
you know, yes. because you don't know when things are going wrong. If you don't have a baseline, you need to have something that tells you where, where you started versus where you are now, you know, yeah. like whenever. And, and again, ever since this has been like a hot topic, I guess, for the last couple of years in the competitive zone. So prior to that, you know, I'd always go get my uh, blood work done for my general um, physical every year and things like that. And I've always been like this, you know what I mean? No problems. I'm low, if anything, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm my cholesterol and all that kind of stuff. But they don't go deep into stuff and they won't they won't go deep into stuff if you're just doing your general thing. So you have to you kind of have to go to an outside lab in order to get this stuff done. So um, actually, I'm going to go. Um, I talked to Heather yesterday, so I'm going to go with her and have my labs done with her. Um, she also sponsored at CCTS. So ladies that Premier are coming to that, medicine. Yep. ladies that are coming to that, you'll get to, to meet her and, and talk with her a little bit and she'll tell you a little bit about what she does with all that kind of stuff too. So that is um, the hard part though, because clients, I get it. They want to use their health mm -hmm, insurance and they right. want to go to a physician. However, if a physician pulls lab work, most of the time they're only pulling 60% of yep. what we need to see. It still irks me that you'll pull that, that doctors will pull a uh, sex hormone panel how many sex hormones we have and they pulled two yeah i mean that's literally reading like the first two chapters of a book and then leaving the rest blank yeah. like there's nothing i can take from that and then i've had clients that are like listen i need to use my health insurance cool go ahead and use your health insurance and then they're getting a bill for 600 to 1700 dollars on the back end because the insurance is saying that it's not medically necessary yep but to me, just like you're saying, even for, you know, lifestyle clients, like getting your lab work done and looking at your internal health should be like a staple. That should be something you do at least once a year. And it's so easy, but it's because doctors, insurance companies make it so hard. And that's why I tell people all the time, I for I have wonderful health insurance. I mm -hmm. forego using it all the I time. Too. I pay my $200 cash to Premier. I have everything that I need on those labs. I get them within 24 to 48 hours. And now I could talk to a physician that actually understands yep. sex hormones and how they affect adrenals and my, other, you know, my kidneys and, and things like that. Like how would it, it's a complete system. When you yep. talk to your doctor, they just looked at the flagged items and then if they can supplement with big pharma or something like that, they will. If not, they'll be like, Stop bodybuilding. Yeah. That's just yeah. like being a bodybuilder. Yeah. It's just, you know, and it's it's crazy to me because and I and this is a whole other rant, you know what I mean? But if you're if you're a healthy individual, they don't want to do anything for you, right? It's it's only when you actually have a problem or that you're sick that they will be like, okay, well, let me give you this, this drug, this drug, this drug, this drug, this drug, this drug. It doesn't fix anything. It just masks it and it creates something other than else that's a problem. You know, it's, it's something else too, that I had to have this discussion with Dan, with my husband last year. I was like, you, you need to understand. I said, as a female, like we have a lot of things going on inside of us that you don't, <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of things that the doctors won't look at. And when they do, like you said, they're going to give you this huge bill. Like, I think I've talked about this before. I can't remember if I talked about this on the podcast or not. But um, I had pain underneath my left rib at one point. This was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I went into the doctor. I thought maybe I had like an ovarian cyst or something like that. Like that's what it felt like. It was just pain underneath my left rib. So um, I went in and they, they asked me a handful of questions and didn't know what it was, blah, blah, blah. And so like, well, you need to go get an ultrasound. So then they referred me to go get an ultrasound, right? So I go to the ultrasound. And before I even walk in there, I said, listen, how much is this going to be? Because I'm going to pay for it. So that when I go in there, you know, it's done, whatever. So it was like 800 bucks, something like that. Right. So I paid for it, went in, got the ultrasound done while I'm in there. They're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with you in here. Like you have a retroverted uterus, but uh, you know, blah, blah. I was like, I have a what? They're like, you, have, <laughs> you have a retroverted uterus. And I was like, what is, I'm like, what is that? I'm 40 at this point. Nobody's ever told me this before. I don't know what this is. I was like, what is that? My uterus goes backwards versus forwards. Right. I feel like so, that's not just something to skip over. No, <laughs> like it's, it's a not. conversation piece. Yeah. It's, it's something to actually talk about. Right. Yeah. yeah. So after I get done with it, with this ultrasound, I leave and I start Googling and I'm like, oh my God, all of my symptoms are from this. Cause what happens is, is that, you know, you're during your cycle and things like that, all that stuff inside of you gets inflamed. So for me, what it was doing is it was pushing backwards, like onto my rectum and creating this referred pain and all this kind of stuff. It was coming from that. That. And I just didn't even know I had it. And so I reached out to my mom. I said, because it's a genetic thing. I was like, do you have this? She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, mom. <laughs> I was like, 
Well, the funny part is when I talked to her, she's like, the only reason why I know this is because when I was trying to get pregnant with you kids, the doctor told me I had a respiratory uterus and it might make it more difficult for me to get pregnant. And she's like, and that was it. That's all they said. They didn't say anything else about this. Nothing. You know, so she didn't even know it was a thing. She never even had pain though or. Nope. Nope. So all of my symptoms were coming from this. I was like, well, there's my problem. You know what I mean? And on top of that, when I get home, months go by, I get more bills for this, this ultrasound. This is the only industry where they can bill you after the fact, even though I paid cash when I was 800 when you were there. Yeah. Yeah. I was Mm -hmm. like, are you kidding? I'm like, you literally like, I got like three more bills, That's you know? And I was like, I paid for this upfront because I didn't want this to happen. You know what I mean? It is the only industry where they can say after the fact, oh, but you actually owe this much. So I'm going to send you this, this, this. It'd be like going to the restaurant and have dinner and be like, well, actually your steak costs another hundred dollars. So I'm going to send you a bill a a month month later. Yeah. So I'm like, I know our health system again. This is a whole other side note, a whole other side topic. But our health and insurance system is ridiculous. It is so, ridiculous. That's you know, why I stay away as much as I can and stay yeah, healthy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and getting your going back to the beginning of this, getting your lab work done can help you prevent having problems happen where you're just at the mercy of whatever the, the hospital, the doctor wants. Well, I think you just do. said the key word preventative, right? Like Doctors preventative. don't like preventative. No. They like disease. They like There's issues. no money in preventing. Exactly. There's no money in curing. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's the sad part. And that's why you mm-hmm. just got to be an advocate for your care. And we just got off on a tangent, I but know. yes. <laughs> didn't, didn't plan on going down this road. However, no. it's, I think it's important to talk about. And also this time of year, it's important to talk about too. Cause like we yeah. said, everybody's going through their off seasons, mm-hmm. you know, they're going into a new year. They want to start the year, the year off, right. Want to start off healthy, all those kinds of things. Getting your lab work is important. Find a provider that you can trust um, to do that for you. And then, and then you can go from there and you can really make sure that you're again, preventing any problems from happening down the road. And even if, just like you said, if that lab work comes back perfect, I tell people all the time, that's not a bad thing either. It's a baseline. It's a baseline. Six months to a year or five years from now. Now you have the baseline. If something does come up, Oh, this is what I was at. And I was healthy here. Something's off now. Something's on this wrong. One. Now I have a comparison. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So. so, so that's our goal for this year. <laughs> Preventative. Stay healthy. Right. That's our. That's our goal. Absolutely. <laughs> always. Always. Uh, before we uh, finish out for today, did you have any questions come in on your question box? Did I did. Ask I have any one. questions. Yeah, let's, I did. Let's do it. Yeah, I know you put it up there a couple hours before we came on. So let me pull it up. Any. Let me pull it up. It was actually um, probably somebody that just. Uh, competed. Hold on a second. You know me and technology. I'll get it eventually. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So someone asked, um, it's, it kind of is the same. It was from the same person. So the two questions was, what do individual judges prefer? Example, who likes harder, who likes softer, who likes straight hair, who likes wavy? Her second question, which I think is actually, the, it, it, they, uh, they're the same or they, they're relevant. Do you prep girls differently on a national show? Uh, do you prep girls differently based on the national show that they do from national show to national show? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is something that gets talked about a lot. I think um, that they think that different judges have different preferences and things like that. Um, and to be honest with you, I feel like that was more the case probably a few years ago, but I feel like now most of the judges are on the same page. I feel like, you know, just, it took a little while to kind of specifically for bikini, right? Bikini. Yeah. Yeah. It took a little bit of time to kind of rein in the criteria a little bit. Um, things were getting too hard. Things were getting too lean for a while. Um, and then I would say over the last two years, that's really kind of backed down quite a bit. Um, and, you know, we always go back to the Olympia as the gold standard to look at what they're rewarding at the Olympia at the top levels. They're not super lean and they're not dehydrated and all this kind of stuff. Right. So I feel like over the last probably the last two years, we've seen a lot more streamlining with the judging panels and with the, the national shows. Because it used to be I used to hear this all the time. You see, if you if you were brunette, more muscle, leaner, 
more muscle, I just said more muscular, all that go to like the New York shows, right? Like the Jersey shows to, to team universe, not team universe anymore, NBC universe. Um, go to those shows, that kind of thing, right? If you want more of the girl next door, softer, less muscle, things like that, go to California, right? Mm -hmm. So muscle contest, things like that. Right. Muscle contest likes bigger glutes, you know, whatever, though, because they like the Brazilian girls, that kind of stuff. So I hear this kind of thing a lot, um, right? And that, I, honestly, I'll be honest, that was kind of the case a few years ago. Not so much anymore. And the reason why is because the judging panels have been, have been a trained better. There's a lot more shows. So there's a lot more options for them to get in front of the, the competitors and actually judge more. Um, more you do something, the better you're going to be at it. So the judging panels have gotten better and the judging panels have been moved all over the place too. So it's not like they're just going to one zone and they're not leaving that zone. They're going all over the place. Right. Yes. So like, for example, being in Japan, the head judges at that show we're Steve and Tyler from, from here, from, from the here. States. Yes. So it's like, okay, so if I go to Japan, I'm not going to be in front of the Japan judges. They did have Japan judges on the panel too, but the head judges were Steve and Tyler, you right. know, and you're going to find that a lot. Most of the pro shows at one point or another are going to have Tyler, Edela, Sandy. They're all going to be judging one show or another at some point. So their influence, their training, their eye, their criteria is being, trained to the other judges in that area yeah if that makes sense definitely right definitely so what that does is that just makes every judge a little bit better correct and they get a little bit closer to the criteria when you've got that when you've got these olympia judges judging all these shows they're teaching the other judges how to judge yeah right yeah so i don't think that that's as big of a thing anymore i think that the girls that come from any show are competitive Yes. Um, and are close to the criteria. Right. What about you in that in that regard? I definitely think this year was the year that um, the girls that were awarded at the national level were as close to the Olympia yeah. as possible. Last year was kind of halfway between. It depended on the show mm -hmm. and things like that. I think they were still getting it together. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about this before. The IFBB in the back office are making a bunch of changes this year with the males divisions and things like mm -hmm. that. And I think there's lots of conversations about bikini as well and what that looks like. And I yep. think for the first time this year at every show, we pretty much walked away and we're like, that was fair. And mm -hmm. that was what we expected. Like mm -hmm. that girl, that one was as close to the Miss Bikini Olympia standard as possible. So I agree. I think at any national show at this point, it's, it's going to be that criteria. Um, I also think that Tyler has done a really good job this year coming out with those videos, yes. talking about more shows and what he sees and what the expectations are. And I love what you said too, because he has come out more to more shows this year to judge and on both coasts. And when you're sitting at the table with him, that's just another learning moment for the rest of that panel, because they're all within one or two points of each other of the winner, but then they're going back to Tyler and saying, okay, why this one? Or, oh, yep. okay, that's, you know, and then everybody's kind of getting on the same page. Yep. So it was, it was a really great year. Something else too is that most shows that I was at for myself and for clients, they're going right backstage and giving feedback right away. Yes. So people are starting to understand the criteria yep. a little bit more. People other than coaches, the athletes are starting to understand more too because they're getting the information right from that judge and able to ask questions and expand on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, as far as polish goes, you know, they don't they don't necessarily care if your hair is straight or curly yet. As you become a pro, yes, you develop your look, right? Mm -hmm. Like they don't want me to leave my blue suit and they like my hair curled. If I mm -hmm. showed up in a red suit next year, which I do have, which I might come out with, and straight hair, they might say, we like your look with your curly and your because mm -hmm. that's just what they like on me. They're human, yep. right? They have an opinion and that's okay. They're, that's human nature. Yep. Um, but as far as, you know, just coming out like on a national show, to me, what just irks me is when the girl looks like she didn't even brush her hair that morning. Yeah. So whether yeah. it's straight, make sure it's straight. If yes. it's curly, make sure it's curly. Make sure you finger your curls and you make sure that they're nice. And you know, especially between prejudging and finals, polish. Polish yep. matters. Yep, it does. And, you know, going to your point of sometimes they just like you a certain way. A good example of that is, is Shelby last year when she yes. did the pink, the pink suit. Pink suit in Miami yep. 2022. Yep. I thought that was a beautiful look. Me too. Um, but the judges were like, no, we like you better with your straight hair and your red suit. 
Yeah. You know, so and, and I, to be honest with you, I agree. Like I was like, that's just more her look, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, once you get used to seeing somebody in a certain look, that's what you want to see. Right. Yeah. Going yeah. to Jen, Jennifer Dory. While I don't think that green suit was a bad suit, I just like her better in purple. You know, right. that's just that's, that's just my personal preference. That's what yeah. I like, you know. Yeah. Um, going to myself, like I never thought that Jamie would be okay with me changing it from the red, but as soon as I put that purple on, it was like, oh, that's your color. You know what I mean? So I don't think it's something that's set in stone, but I think it's just something that when you see it, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When you think of your favorite athlete, you're thinking of them with their specific hair yes. view, their specific suit color. Like it's just them. That's, yep. you know, so. Yep. I don't and, know. and going back to like, you know, we have the one girl, she's actually one of um, Shelby's clients there too with Brandy was so she, Brandy. yeah. So I, I would love to see her go on stage with her, her hair natural. So, so she does the, the, like the shaped cut with the bleach blonde hair. It's such a, it's a hot, like rock and look and stuff, but she wears a wig. And the reason why is because her back is not, perfectly symmetrical when she gets mm. into her, her back pose and she doesn't have as much muscle on her upper back as she does on her glutes and things like that. So her body looks, um, doesn't look proportioned. So, you know, while I want to see her with her natural look, she's got to get that balance there first so that it's not a detraction when she goes on stage. If she can get there and she can get that, that back open up and all that kind of stuff to where it, it's symmetrical and all of that, that look would be killer. Yeah. Absolutely killer. It's so different. Yeah. I, lo I love her natural. I love her both ways, obviously, yeah. but yes, yeah. her natural is. is so I would love to see that happen. But again, it's the physique has to come first. Correct. So we always go back to, yeah, the polish is one thing, but it can't outweigh the physique. If the physique is off, the polish isn't going to save it. You know yep. what I mean? Got to have that it, balance you know, look top to bottom. I've said this before myself. I'm like, I know that my presence on stage and my posing on stage and my look on stage is something that can beat people that have a better look than me, have a better, Absolutely. have a better physique than me. But that's just because I know how to work it and I know how to pose it and I know how to do all that stuff. But you gotta have the physique first. I mean, the bottom line is you gotta have like if I got my physique to my 100 percent it'll beat somebody else whose physique is a little bit better than mine just because I know how to present it better. Yes. You know, so yes. there, there's there's always that fine line of that too. So you know, that's something else I talk about with Brandy too. I think she would kill it with the, with the the natural look too, as far as confidence is concerned. So if if we can get her physique to the point where it's almost there, like it's at like ninety percent, then we can probably take the wig off and go with natural. You know, would you so, would you keep her pink suit at that point, or would you switch it up? I would want to put her in red, honestly, with the that's blonde what hair. I was thinking. Yeah, bleach that's blonde. What I, I want to put her in red. I wanted to put her in red last year. She wanted the pink. <laughs> red, so, <laughs> I know, right? Well, she did. She wanted to do red, and we talked about red if she did that the natural look. Um, but she wasn't going to go with the, na the natural look, so we just stuck with the pink that worked for her. But it's uh, coming. I want to get her. Yeah, it's I want to get. Her, I want to get her in the red. I do. I do. <laughs> That's just my own, my own two cents. For the so, holidays. <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So again, going back to what you said, like, I don't think that there's a specific look you have to have. It's just polish is a big polish. one. Polish. Yeah. A big one. That And for me, doing hair and makeup at shows, if you don't, like, if I do your hair curly that morning, I tell every girl this. I'm like, okay, your curls are really tight when you leave my my, my chair. Make sure that they are not tight like that when you go on stage. Like you right. said, finger brush them or whatever you need to do. 99% of the time, they don't do it. It drives me nuts. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want you to brush them now because they'll fall out by the time you go get on stage. I'm like, I want you to do it right before you go on. Just brush yep. through them, break them up, make them, make them look nice and healthy and bouncy and all that kind of stuff. Oh, my Drew's so cute now because like we talk about this all the time with my hair and then a girl will come up on stage, not one of our athletes. And he's like, oh no, she forgot to finger her curls. <laughs> I'm like, yep, it's just ringless. <laughs> oh man. Because a lot of times too, like they'll fall just perfectly and you don't have to. That's great. And I tell them too, I'm like, if they're, if they're nice and loose and wavy and, and pretty and stuff like that, leave them alone. Great. I'm like, but if they have, if they haven't fallen out, please go like this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do that when you wake up from your nap after pre right? Too. Yeah. Like, smooth your hair out. Yeah. You know, put a little wave oh, in it. Yeah. Like, well, it's just you have to think when you're on the national level, right? You're you're going for a pro card, right? So yeah. at that point, you should already be showing up like a pro. Like these are not things that we're talking about on the pro level at most times, right? right. So it's like if we're still talking about you smoothing your hair out after between pre-judging and finals, maybe 
we need to yeah. talk about if you're worthy of a pro card that time, you know, right. I'll just take myself. We talk about this all the time. 2020, I was not ready for that pro card yet. I yeah. didn't pose like a pro. I wasn't showing up like a pro there. It's not a shock to me. I was not awarded a pro card that year mm -hmm. when I earned it in 2022. It's because I earned it that year. I was mm -hmm. ready to be awarded to be a pro. So, you know, if you're showing up that way, just make sure you're showing up correct. If posing, you know, there was some, one girl that I watched on the nationals, I watched the live stream, she came out and her core was tight and she had this beautiful, these beautiful big shoulders and she hits that first pose and she just looks scared. And I was like, oh, no, well, this is boring. Yeah, That's what the judges are going to think too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to be captivating to earn that pro card. Absolutely. They're giving you a pro card for a pro level physique. Like you got to act like you got that confidence. It. Yeah. Right, act like it's yours. Exactly. Yeah, you like, gotta I, look at them too. You gotta I think it was your Becky that them. said this. I can't remember who said this. It might have been me, but I know I know I talked about it with Becky at one point or another. But it was like, um, if you don't believe that you're worthy of that, how are you gonna make the judges believe that you're worthy of that? Yeah. Yeah. You got yeah, was it first. that's been that's uh, hey, I've had that happen to me a, a ton. I didn't believe yeah. in myself, so how am I gonna like expect the judges to believe in me? <laughs> You right. Know? If you yeah. don't believe, yeah. how are you make anybody else believe it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Hmm. Tapping into that confidence factor and everything we discussed, controlling what yep. you can control. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a great place to end today. Wrap it up. <laughs> Wrap it up and give her Christmas. I know, right? Right there. There you go. <laughs> so that wraps up the, up the we see episode 16. Yes, it was. 16. So as I said at the beginning, because I was good about it again, I said subscribe, like, and comment. You did it already. <laughs> I did it. I'm good. Yes. Um, yeah, let us know. Again, let us know in the comments um, if you have questions about this kind of stuff or anything else that you'd like us to cover. Because it always, whenever we read the comments, it spawns our ideas for the next topic, that kind of thing. So feel free to put anything in there that you'd like to, um, anything more that you'd like us to talk about. Um, we will get one of these out next week, too. It may be a little bit wonky with the scheduling again, just again with the holidays. But we definitely get them out every week. So one way or another, we get We're them out. We get them out. done. You know, it's you you may be traveling across the country or whatever, but we'll we'll figure it out. One way figure or another, it out. we'll figure it out. So me, you, Dan, and Drew might be spending Christmas together. Over I know. <laughs> right? Exactly. Hey. That'll be, that's all right. That's what I do with my family. I get them on FaceTime. We're good, you know? <laughs> the love of technology. That's right. Absolutely. So with that, guys, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, again, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. And we'll be back again next week. See you guys next week.